Okay, guys, let's get started. <clears throat> Good to see you here this morning. If you're watching us on, on the internet, we're grateful that you're with us. Uh, we've asked if you watch on Facebook, please like this and share it with uh, with your friends. Uh, I want to apologize to you for last week. We had a technical issue last week. Uh, we've been dealing with a lot of new equipment, and, and the guys have been working nonstop overtime trying to get this stuff up and running. And uh, we don't know what happened exactly, but it shut the internet off in here. And, uh, and then rebooted the computer it didn't wasn't supposed to do that but it did it anyway and so we had about 10 minutes of the class all we had that was went out so uh so i apologize again i'm going to review some this morning so so you kind of won't have it missed much but uh but uh, we're wel welcome to and glad you're with us we really are glad that you've decided to share share this time with us this morning uh I got a couple of things I, I, for those who weren't here. Paul is waiting for a, for a, a feedback from, from MD Anderson tomorrow. They're supposed to let him know tomorrow what exactly is going on and, and uh, what's going to happen, what has, has to happen to move forward. So please continue to pray about that. Continue to pray that that, uh, that comes out well. It does look like it was caught extremely early, what they told him. It looked like it was extremely early. So. Uh, so anyway, that 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 in itself could be a blessing. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I don't have anything else that really we need to talk about. So we're gonna we're gonna pray and we're gonna get started here. All right, let's pray. Almighty God, we are uh, in awe of you and of the power and the majesty that you display every single day. Father, we uh, we thank you for for the opportunity for a relationship with you that uh, we have because of your Son. Uh, we cannot say thank you enough. So, Father, what we're striving to do is we're striving to honor you this morning through class and through worship uh, to glorify and honor you uh, in our lives. Father, we are doing together as a group this morning. We ask your blessings upon us as we do that. For those that are watching online this morning in class and, and worship that will watch the live stream, I pray for each one of them. I pray for their families, and I pray for the situation they find themselves in. Father, I know and that there are people out there that are struggling in their lives. They're struggling to understand. I pray that uh, that what is said this morning, in here and and in our worship, will be uh, uh, will be uh, will touch them in a very special way. Father, you know who they are. So I ask, Father, that you touch their hearts and you touch their minds, and that you be with us. That we might say the things that need to be said, that we might lead the songs that need to be that need to be led. That would that would uh, inspire them to a to a living closer to you. Inspire them to coming into contact with you. Father, just thank you for that. Bless us again this, this morning as we study and we pray uh, that you be with each one of our families that are that are struggling. You know that there are things in our lives that <laughs> that we're dealing with in every family, uh, and I pray for each one of those fam our families that uh, that you help us as as uh, as they raise children and as we get through life and as we get through jobs and health and all of those things. Father, I pray that your your hand would be on each one of us that we might be the people that we're supposed to be. Thank you, Father. And thank you for your Son. It's in His name that we pray. Amen. We're going to be in Second John this morning. If you want to turn over there, last week we looked at at uh, what it meant to be to be uh, someone who walks in truth and walks in love. Now, because on the internet we it went down last week, I'm going to review that some. Uh, you know, it is. Yeah. Uh, if if we're gonna uh, if we're gonna walk in truth, okay. If we're gonna walk in truth then you have to know what the truth is. You have to make a decision at some point that I am going to start looking at truth and looking at what God says. It doesn't make any difference what people say. It doesn't make any difference what I say. The only thing that matters is what does God say and what am I going to do with that, what he says. You know, Jesus is very specific. He said the things that I spoke, the things that I, that I spoke that are going to judge you in the last day are the things that the Father told me to say. Okay? So... If you're looking at if you're looking at what does it mean to walk in truth, it is very obvious to me, and from the from biblically that we're that we are supposed to live and work and and move the way God tells us to, not the way you think He says, but the way He tells us to. Now, John, John writes to these people and says, it, "It gives me great pleasure to know that some of you are walking in truth." And we talked about that. We talked about the uh, the. Uh, uh, the dynamic of that, and I told you, I told this group uh, that uh, uh, you know, and I'm going to say it again because uh, y'all know that we've been studying with Sarah Taylor and, and Jared Taylor. Y'all know that, and y'all know that Sarah Taylor was baptized a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about that last week. Uh, and I said that 
the the reason that Sarah is where she is right now is because of all of us. And I said because when Scott lead the song, let a song before, she may not. And I and I talked to her Wednesday about this. So what I said last Sunday, I talk, I clarified it with her on Wednesday, and I said there were songs that you heard that you just heard them. Now, what happened Sunday? And she said, I listened to the song. I listened to the words. Didn't do that before. So, and I told you that uh, that some of the things that she did, and, and I, I asked her some specifics of what it meant for her now as of what it meant before. And understand something, God, I ain't telling you anything I haven't asked, told her. I am talking about this because these people need to know. I told my son, my, my class the other day, they need to know that the Holy Spirit is still alive and well. Y'all need, y'all need to know that the Holy Spirit is alive and well and active, and He is working. You know, she had been diagnosed with PTSD many years ago. Went to all kinds of doctors. One of her, one of the side effects or one of the symptoms of PTSD is uh, is having nightmares, night terrors, what they call it. And she told, she said. As as of the Wednesday before, as of the Wednesday before, she said, she said from from Thursday morning, th- Wednesday night, she said I have not had a nightmare since. She said I've had them for ten years. She said I had a pain in my chest right here. I've had it for ten years. So I went to doctors, took all kinds of medicine, had it right there. She said Thursday morning the pain was gone, had to come back. Good. You know, she said, I found a peace in my life that I never knew existed before. Cole and I told her, I said, we told you. She said, yeah, you did. But I had to experience it for myself. And this text says that grace, mercy, and peace come when you walk in the, in the truth and walk in love. And that she is a living, breathing, walking, talking example of this very text. And I told her, I have to tell them. She said, that's fine, go ahead. I said, it's going to go on the internet. She said, I don't care. It's okay, go ahead. Tell them. You know, when you when you look at a text and it says you got to walk in the truth, okay, that can mean a whole lot of things. But when you see it's evidence in somebody's life and you see them, and I look around this room and I see a lot of people in this room that walk in truth. You walk according to what God says to do. I understand that. But when you see it so dramatically happen in someone's life, I understand where John's coming from. You know, if something happened to Sarah now, it would pain me deeply because of, we've spent so much time working with her and, and agonizing over her. And it's been, a, it's been a real joy to be a part of this and to experience that and to know that the peace she has. And so now when Scott leads a song or whoever's leading them this morning, or when you, I told that when you do a communion thought, you know, they see it different. They hear it different than they ever did before. That's why it's so, we have to be so careful. What you say and what you do and how you live your life because they're watching you. It's you know when when she knows that Paul's been diagnosed with a melanoma. You know it may not have mattered when Kathy was diagnosed, but it does when he's diagnosed because she thinks different now. There's a different mindset now because she's walking in truth now for the first time in her whole life, first time. And so now she's looking. Now she's concerned. You know what what's going on here? Because she understands the dynamic between God and people now that she didn't know before. She thought she was just on a she was just on this track, just going. It didn't make any difference. It didn't make any difference what she did or didn't do. You know, she did she believed that people like that believe that they they, they deserve everything they're getting. All the garbage they believe they, they deserve it. That's what they believe. And so when you when you're walking around in our in our sheltered lives, we're going. I don't understand. I don't, comp- I don't comprehend this. I understand there are some broken folks out there. There's some broken folks watching this morning. I don't know who they are. God knows who they are. They're watching. And they're going, I know exactly what he's talking about. And and John says here, he said, You want grace, peace, and mercy? That's what he said in verse 3. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ. The Father said, will, will teach, will, will be with us in truth and in love. That's where they come from. Truth and love. Brings grace, mercy, and peace in our life. And so he says, walk in truth. That means find out what God says to do and do that, what he says to do. Come on, guys, there's plenty of room up here. I'll put you right up here in front. They'll be able to see you on TV and everything. <laughs> You're going to make you go back out the door and go the other way. 
for those of you who are watching online, you, know, oh, you can't see you can't see it. The only people you can see is about right here. That's about you know they can see about right there is all they can see. What do we have in here, Georgia? What was about thirty? So about 30, 34. 34 in here. So you know, I wanted I wanted to, to review some because of because the thing went down last week. I wanted the people that watch and, and they can't come. They they they're people from out of town. They're not can't come. What it meant, you know, that what we were talking about. So we've talked about walking in truth. And then he says, I give you a command, not a not a new command, it's a command I've given you before. We have to love one another. And the text we used last week was, remember, from John chapter 13, it said, and they'll know you're my disciples' house by the love you have one for another. And he says, we need to walk in that love. We need to walk in a place where people will know that we care about each other, where we love each other. So so when you look at, at a, that, that I must love, I'm going to take you to a text. I don't know if we did this last week. I don't remember. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 for just a second. Sometimes I do I do these 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 classes and I got notes and I really don't follow them. So sometimes something will come up and, and I don't remember if I did it or not. So we're going to look at this text because this is about love. It's about the, the idea of loving and and, I, I, and and truth and loving come together. I want you to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to start in verse 9. It says, The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power, do signs and wonders that serve the lie. Not all the ways that wickedness, and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they've refused to love the truth and so be saved. Part of the walking in love, part of the walking in love that this text says, part of that walking in love is I have to learn how to love the truth. What does it mean to you when, when you... When it when it's when you finally dawned on you that I need to fall in love with the truth, what the truth is, what did that mean to you? What do you mean? Anybody? Uh, what do you mean? Jesus died for us. Gives us up to have our sins forgiven. Hope of eternal life. And you fell in love with that. What did it mean to fall in love with that? Well, it takes a lot of pressure off of. It takes a lot of pressure off. Yeah, it does. What did it mean? What did it mean in your daily walk? Did it mean anything in your daily walk? Did, did it, was it different when you started falling in love with the truth? I would say it's different when you fall in love than when you, when you ignore it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's different when you ignore it. Yeah, you're right. It is. You know, what were you going to say, Vincent? Uh, it changes who the people are drawn near to you. So okay. Uh, once you're in the light, the people okay. start backing off because they don't comprehend it. Okay. You know? You know, I know a lot of people that know the truth or know truth, know truthful things. But haven't fallen in love with it. It's different when you fall in love with it, because now it starts to dictate to you who you're going to be. It makes you say, "I can no longer do this, this, and this, and I have to apply this, this, and this," because I know that these things I don't like and these things I do like. So when it comes to the truth, what the truth is, what does it mean? What is, and we're going to look at that in a minute here in Second John. What what does it mean that I'm going to walk in the truth? I'm going to walk according to what Jesus said to do. Now, is it going to be easy? No, absolutely not. No, it's not easy. Not easy. Not in any one of our lives has it been easy to walk in the truth. For some, it's been different than others. For some, it's been, you know, God has asked me to do things that I wasn't comfortable with. God has taken me away from people that I was comfortable with. God has put me in position with people that I'm not really comfortable with because I don't have anything in common with. So he's, so there's been a lot of things that the truth has made happen that, that weren't comfortable. Okay? It was uncomfortable. And... So when I'm looking at what does it mean to fall in love with, I have to fall in love with the idea that things are different now. The truth says things are different in your life. That's what the truth is going to tell me. What are you going to do with when God says, do not forsake the assembling of the saints? What do you do with that? If you're going to fall in love with the truth, what do you have to say? What do you have to do? I have to make a decision, right? When you find truth, when you're studying God's word and you find truth, you have a couple of options, right? You can ignore it or you can be obedient to it. What happens when you ignore it? You keep going the same way you've always been going. And the same stuff keeps happening in your life. What happens when you say, I'm not going to ignore this anymore. I'm, I'm looking at it now, and, I'm, and I've fallen in love with the truth, and so I'm going, to, I'm going to start to act like it. Or, I fell in love with God. You remember what it was like to fall in love with God? To fall in love with Him. Not fall in love with a mate. To fall in love with God. And you may say, well, I don't know what that means. What does it mean to fall in love with God? Uh, I can't, what did it mean for you to fall in love with Sarah? What did it mean? Was it different when you knew you fell in love with her? Yeah. 
It was different. Did the did lifestyle change? Not at first. But but it, but it, well, of course you know. But you know when you come to God, when you come to the cross and you come to God and you start falling in love with it, it doesn't nothing. It doesn't change at first, does it? It doesn't. It takes a while, doesn't it, to fall in love with somebody? You know, love is not an emotion that happens like this. It takes a while. You start to you that start that process where you fall in love with. When you realize that you have fallen in love with her. And you realize that she was more important than anything else. Things change, didn't it? You start to act like for the benefit of that relationship. Right. Absolutely. You start, you start to act in, in, in the benefit of that relationship. Right? So falling in love with God is no different. When you realize I've fallen in love with God, what are you going to do? I'm going to start acting what's in the benefit of that relationship. Right? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand and think you're doing a great job at this. All right? I'm not. You know, because I know in most of our lives, we've probably got a long ways to go. But in our relationships and physical relationships, we've got a long ways to go too, don't we? You know, there are ups and downs. I told Jared, I said, this is going to be like this. I told Sarah, it's going to be like this. It's going to be up and down. Don't be discouraged when it's on the downhill slope. It's going to get back up again. It will. That's just the way it works. If I'm going to fall in love with the truth, I'm going to fall in love with, I'm going to walk in love. That's going to be, I'm going to walk like it tells me to walk. I'm going to make that decision. I'm going to walk like it tells me to walk. You know, Sarah has specific ideas about what she expects from a husband, right? She had those. You know, so now if I fall in love with her, you know, we've got to come to a place where we start to we start to make this mold together, right? Where some things I'm going to have to change, some things she's going to have to change. We're going to have to kind of we're going to have to get on the same page, right? When it doesn't work, when it doesn't work, you know what happens? There's no communication and nobody talking and nobody nobody's trying to change. You know, and that works in all of our lives. Every one of us, every relationship in here, it's what that is. And the problem is that we bring that kind of mindset into this relationship with God. So when we start saying, I love God, I'm going to walk in love, what does it really mean? Well, I walk in, I'm going to walk only the way I think it makes me feel better. Makes me feel okay. I really would go to the, want to go to the lake today. So I'm going to go to the lake. Or I really want to go, I really want to go golfing today. So I'm going golfing. Doesn't make any difference that it's Sunday morning. Because it's what I want to do. I want to go hunting. So what I'm going to do? I'm going hunting. I'm going hunting. You know? Why? Because it's what I want to do. It's what makes me happy. God wants me to be happy, doesn't he? A loving God wants me to be happy, doesn't he? Doesn't he want me to be happy? He says he wants to give me an abundant life, right? Isn't that part of happiness? I'm, I'm going to be happy, right? Well, if I fall in love with God, you know, and sometimes it takes people. You know, it took my wife. It took a, it took a young lady named Janet Herring. To say, you need to get your act together. Because I really wasn't acting like I was in love with him. So, when you look at this and say, I'm, I'm going to fall in love with him, I'm, and that means I'm going to fall in love with each, with other people, I'm going to walk like that, and I'm going to and I'm going to walk like I do, like I believe it, and I'm going to walk like I'm acting like it. Okay? That's what he tells me to do. Now, now look at verse, uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to move on. Uh, look at verse 7. He said, I say this, because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. And such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now I'm going to stop right there. What does it mean when someone comes along and says, I does not profess that Jesus came in the flesh? Tell me what that means to you. What does it mean? Don't believe. Doesn't believe, okay. What does it mean? If someone's going to come along and teach, teach that Jesus didn't, you're not going to hear people today teaching that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. That's not what these televangelists and all that stuff, people you see on the internet and all that stuff, you get on you go on YouTube. I'm telling you, man, you know, you'll get a plethora of people out there talking about all kinds of stuff. Some of it's good, some of it's nonsense. So what are you gonna are they gonna say, well I don't believe that Jesus actually came in the flesh. Now there may be a few like that, but most of them, what are they going to be teaching? Things that are not true. If you know enough about the book, you'll know pretty quickly someone is eating the truth, someone isn't. Someone that doesn't know what he's talking about. So what is it? What is he going to be teaching? That 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 is similar to this. We don't we don't have the same problem. These problem these people they were dealing with Gnosticism, and Gnosticism said that that there was a part of that that was about it was about uh, it was about spiritual and not material. It wasn't about physical. It was more about spiritual. And so they promoted an ideology that went away from Jesus coming in the flesh and living as a human being. How did that? How does that translate today?
How does it work today? Who do I need to be aware of and watching out because that person, which I'm going to read another verse. Look at what he said. He said, any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for. What is their goal? To take away what you have. Take away what you've worked for. That's the goal. Satan, they're run by Satan. They're an the antichrist. They're a deceiver. They're a liar. What are they saying? So you know how to recognize them. What are they saying? That's exactly, there's what. Do y'all hear that? Don't talk to me about your God. If he truly was a loving God, he wouldn't let all this nonsense happen. I've heard that numerous times. What's another? What would he be saying? What would this guy, this deceiver that comes in here? Yeah. So, so, the most deceptive thing is to sit there. They, they will preach. <laughs> they'll just put a bill for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the brother of Satan. Uh, that's you know, a Mormon. Mm -hmm. He was actually the archangel, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Gabriel, or whatever okay. Jehovah's Witness. Okay. They'll sit there and just twist the little bit okay. where you're actually not believing the true truth. Okay. But... <laughs> Part of the truth speaks to them. All of this, all of this is is in conjunction with not teaching that Jesus came in the flesh. If Jesus doesn't come in the flesh, go ahead, Barbara. I think that one part of the thing when Jesus didn't come in the flesh was the potential wasn't important. Okay. So what you do in the flesh doesn't really matter. Yeah. I think there are people that was the teaching of their day, their day, it was. And so you hear people say, Well, God's grace covers it all, don't worry about it. Yeah. But but how can God's grace come? How can it be a part of our of our of our makeup if Jesus didn't come in the flesh? There is no grace if Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Do you understand that? There is no grace. There's no mercy if Jesus. There's no peace if Jesus didn't come in the flesh. So when people are out there teaching that, well, you don't really have to do this or this. You can just do this or this. What are they teaching? That Jesus didn't come in the flesh. They're teaching a lie. They're teaching something that's not true. Okay. And that's teaching that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Because if Jesus didn't come in the flesh, there is no fellowship. None of us here have fellowship together in a spiritual sense, and there is no salvation. No resurrection. There's no resurrection. Do you hear that? Yeah. There's no resurrection. And and the, everything that we do hinges on whether there's a resurrection. So if, if they're not teaching the truth about Jesus, if they're teaching, all you got to do is accept Jesus as your Savior and be saved. That's not true. That's not biblical. That's not what the Bible teaches. We talked about the other day, Wednesday night. We talked about you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's not true. That's not. That's not true. That's, you can't. You can. You don't have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to go to heaven. But that's what some people say. Is that teaching? Is that teaching that Jesus came in the flesh? It's teaching a lie. And basically, it's saying Jesus didn't really come because Jesus said it, but He also said other things. And you have to put them all together. You have to connect all the dots together. And so when you start looking at that and saying. Oh, okay, well, yeah. and when you start teaching as, as a church, and I know that's happened before, because I've talked to people, talked to a lot of folks and say, well, a lot of folks, and I've heard it before. I've heard, well, this place said that if I'm not baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, I can't go to heaven. I'm not really saved. So we'll come on back here and we'll teach you how to do this. What? What? Please, I want to see this. Please, so that we can start teaching folks how to do this. I want to know. That's teaching. That's teaching something that Jesus did not profess. That's teaching that He did not come in the flesh. That's what I think it means. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? You know, if 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 it if it if I if you don't if you acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh, I'm acknowledge everything that He said, everything He talked about, and everything that the apostles talked about because the apostles said. Listen to what he, Paul says in First Corinthians chapter 14. He said he said if you're a person and you're a prophet, you think you're spiritual. Acknowledge this. Now I see us, that everything I write came from the Lord. That means everything in, that, in Ephesians, everything in Colossians, everything in First and Second Thessalonians, everything in Romans, everything everywhere he wrote came from God. So that means it's truth, right? And that means I've got to look at this and say, okay, what does it mean to me? What do, what do I got? I've got to be very aware of what I'm letting people tell me and what's coming into my head. You need to check out what I tell you. Okay? Don't buy it because I told you. Yeah, God, go ahead. I mean, majority of the New Testament community is churches dealing with the same problem over and over. Yes. You look in Romans, you've got an example of people celebrating different holidays. Yep. Romans 14 and mm -hmm. some, some others not, but 
Romans 8, you've got a specific discussion on the Spirit, and I think it, it lends itself to truth and love. It's, it, Absolutely. You've got to walk in Spirit, walk in truth, walk in love, but it's these pagan traditions and the tradition traditions of the Jews and, and even the Gentiles, they're fighting this tooth and nail because it's just not the way things were done. Yeah. And yep. I, that's still present in 2021 <laughs> that we don't do things because that's not the way they were done yeah. 100 yeah. years ago or 50 years ago. Yeah. But I think it's a it's a common theme that apparently God and Paul were extremely aware of because, you know, walking in the Spirit is a tough concept. Yes, it is. You're giving up 100% of your own personal beliefs and turning it over to a higher power. Uh, I mean, that... That you can't see. You know, if baptism doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. you know, getting it, get in a tub of water or whatever, going in a river, I mean, it, but, you know, the Bible, the Word, the Spirit, it doesn't have to make sense to us, but we've got to live it because Jesus lived it. That's exactly and right. And that's the whole point of Him coming in the flesh and being resurrected, overcoming death. It's, yeah, it can be done. We just can't do it without Him. That's exactly right. And, you know, and so... Something you said a while ago about the traditions. One of the things that got my attention when I was first studying the book is, is I came across a text that said, and they teach for doctrine the commandments of men. And I'm going, wait a minute. And I read it again and again. And I went to another place, found it again. I went it again and again. Because that really, that really hit me. Because that's exactly what I was a part of. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. That meant there was no commandment from God to do this, but they were teaching it for doctrine. Okay? That's not teaching Jesus came in the flesh. Jesus said, listen to me. Don't listen to your doctrine. Listen to me. Make a doctrine created. Create your doctrine based on him, and then the doctrine will be true. It won't be tradition, what tradition says. It'll be what God says it is. And so that's what we have to do. And, and we get, can get all, all twisted up. I was, I was looking at this, and, and it, says, uh, it says in here that... that, that, uh, that in the third letter, he's going to talk to Gaius about a guy named Diotrephes. And I told you all last week, I think last week I said, I said it gives me, gave, gives me great comfort to read 3 John, to know that even John back then, 2,000 years ago, was having to deal with people that were trying to be disruptive in the church. Yeah. It means that we are not alone, right? And when we get one of those phone calls and we're having to deal with the, with the negativity that happens sometimes, that John dealt with it, Paul dealt with it, and here we are 2,000 years later still dealing with it. There's nothing new. Nothing new. It's all the same. People struggling to find out what truth is, struggling to find out how to love, and, and, so, and our job is to try to train them and teach them. Some of them you can, and some of them you can't. Paul, I mean, John's going to tell them, don't worry about this guy. He said, I'm coming, and I'll deal with him face to face. So here he's talking, telling, man, it gives me great pleasure to know that, that you're walking in truth and you're walking in love. But be careful of those folks that are, that are out there teaching this lie that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Be careful, folks, of those people that are teaching those things today that are not true. Be aware. That's why you've got to be a student of the book. That's why you've got to learn how to connect the dots. It's not that difficult, guys. You want to help with it? Come on Friday night. I'm going to encourage, come on Friday night. We will study the book together. That's what we do. You want to, don't tell me, oh, well, I don't have time. Man, well, you think I've got loads of time? Come. I dare you. I dare you to come and put what you believe to the test. Let's try it and see. And see if you, if you, if you really know as much as you think you know. And we'll learn together. You just come. Or, or you can come on Wednesday night. You know, we got a class down there where Cole's taxing you guys, I think. That's what I heard. He's making you look at it from a... You know, or you can come in my class. Traditional, we're going to start studying the book of John. I mean, uh, we're going to start, we started studying the book of Acts. I get my classes mixed up. So we're start, we started the book of Acts. So, you know, you know, I'm telling you, he says in verse 8, watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for. What does that mean to you? How hard have you worked to get what you have? How hard are you working? How hard is you working to get what you have? Are you, or is your work completely dependent on what Dan or Cole does, or what, or what Scott does behind, or what Paul? Or what, is that what it, what it depends on? Or are you working for yourself? What are you doing? 
I'm going to take you to a text, okay? And I want to take you to First John. I mean, First Corinthians. Chapter 9, and we're going to start in verse uh, 24. Okay? Chapter 9, verse 24, 1 Corinthians. This is what he said. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games, competes in the games, goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. What does he say? It's, it's about training. What do you do? How is that working for you? How is it working for you that you are that you have that you are working out your own salvation, what Paul said. I'm working out my own salvation. How? With fear and trembling. I do not want to be found lacking. I do not want to be found amiss. So I'm going to work overtime. I'm going to do everything I can do to make sure I can connect the dots in this thing. And if I don't know what to do, I'm going to go find somebody that does. Friday night. All right? And we'll learn together. We'll learn together. Okay? You know, I'm, he said, be careful. These people are coming for one reason and one reason only. And that's to take you what you've got away from you. Okay? That's what they're coming for. That's what Satan wants. Satan's not out there in the world dealing with God. He got him. He's coming in here to take what you've got away from you. Be careful. Don't listen to them. And he says here, he says, and he said, uh, that that you uh, lost. Oh, watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. That you get the reward that you're looking for. What's the reward you're looking for? I want to go to home. You know, I, I, I love I love I love you guys, but sometimes, man, we say some things, you know. Uh and and I I've I've had I've sat in a room with someone that said, Man, they finally went home to be with so and so. Man, I'm not going home to be with anybody. I'm going home to be with Christ. If my wife dies, I love my wife to death. I do, man. And we spend a lot of years together. We're gonna to be married in a, in a, another another year or so. We're gonna be married fifty years. Fifty years we're gonna be married. You know? But I'm not, when I die, if she dies first, I'm not going home, going there to see her. We'll be there together. But it won't be the same relationship. I'm going there to see Christ. That's what I'm going for. That's the reward I'm looking for is to go be with him. I want to, I want I got a bunch of questions to ask. I got a bunch of them I want to ask. But, you know, I probably won't need to ask any of them. Just being with him will be enough. I don't think it'll matter anymore. Right now, the human being, I got a bunch of them. Some of them are, some of them are pretty tough. You know, pretty tough. You know, I want to know why my 40-year-old son has to go through what he's got to go through with three little kids. You know? How come you're having to struggle with the struggle that you're having? How come we had a pandemic, you know, that, that disrupted the church and many churches closed their doors because they could not stay close? Because people got comfortable watching on the Internet. And more comfortable watching on the Internet coming to be together. You know? But you know what? That ain't going to matter. It ain't going to matter. <clears throat> I know that I'm going to be rewarded fully as long as I stay focused on who? I got to stay focused on him and what the truth about him is. And the only place I'm going to get that is from here. So what do I need to do? Study the word. You know, how many of you study this every day? Every day. I'm talking about study it. I just read it. Study it every day. That yet you that you go in. Now, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm tickled to death that y'all are reading it every day. But I need to go into strict training. I want to find out what the truth is. I want to learn how to connect this part over here with this part over here. How do I do that? There's ways to find out how to do that. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to read over here. I'm going to read over here. And I'm going to start taking notes of things that I find. So when I find something over here, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to find out. That's what, I'm, that's what he means about strict training. You know, Paul, I mean, he's played football for Victoria High School. And you start as a freshman. And the only stipulation your mother and I had was if you start a year, you finish a year. That was the only stipulation we had. He played for four years. Okay, he, there was times during the summer when I took him every single day 
to the gym, and he worked out one day, ran the next. Every day, we I took him, dropped him off. I went and did my errands, came back, picked him up. And he, he'd come back, stink. Oh, my gosh. It was awful. It was awful. Why do you do that? Why do that? Yeah. He was, he was, uh, he was committed. Yeah, how many, how, you remember how many started in your freshman class? 110, 105, something like that. That's how many kids started in the freshman class playing football. You know how many they ended up with seniors? Now, some of them moved off. Some of them moved off. 22, 23, something like that. How many they, they were ended with in four years? 22 or 23. That's all that was left. You know? But, it, but that experience made him. It, it completely changed the way he, he approached life from the things he learned there. How can you give any less to this than he gave to that? How can you get? How can you stand before God? How can we stand before God and say, Oh, God, I did everything I could do when I wasn't willing to do even a partial of what he did or what many of you have done? You know, and, and you know, and, I mean, you play golf. Are you any good at it? Are you any good at it? Not anymore. What you used to do? <laughs> Why were you good at it before? Why were you good at it? I played a lot. Because you played a lot, right? I used to bowl a lot. I was really good. I could hit what I was aiming at. I could. I could hit a quarter at 25 steps pretty much 90% of the time with that bow. You know why? Because I practiced every single. Ask them. Ask them. What did they, they have to do? I stood on a tri I got on a tripod, and they had to run and get fetch arrows. They fetched arrows for me, so I didn't have to get up and down, up and down, up and down. So I made them go fetch arrows. And I'd shoot 10, 15 arrows, and I got to the point where I couldn't shoot. I had to shoot different spots because I was, I was breaking all my arrows. I was hitting arrows and, and, and knocking the fletches off and stuff. But I, because I practiced, I'd shoot five, 6,000 arrows in the summertime, and they went and got them all. <coughs> and I stood up on, stayed up on the tripod and shot. Did you have to put an apple on Paul's No, hand? no. Yeah. They, I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't let me do it. I wouldn't have. <laughs> but, you know, the point is, you know, but I, but I went out to shoot one time, two times in a season. And I practiced five, six, seven thousand arrows. D did that not true? That's I shot a bunch of arrows. I shot a bunch of arrows. You know, practice, 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 beat it. And I looked at this and I said, how come I can't give this the same effort? Why should, should I, shouldn't I give this the same effort? Shouldn't we give this the same effort? God forgive us for not doing that. Because one day, some, and I know some, have lost what they worked for. Because they weren't willing to do that. And they've lost it and they're gone. And they're gone. Right, Dan? We know them. We know who they are. We agonize over them. But there's nothing you can do. You can't bring them back. They're not coming back. They've lost it. They're gone. Because they've decided that this was too hard and too too invasive and I'm not going to do this. Okay? Thanks, guys. We're, uh, we're going to end right there. I'm going to finish this up next week and we're going to start over. I want to I want to uh, tell the folks that, we're, that are watching. Man, sometimes we get wound up. Sorry about that. But, <laughs> You know, I prayed when we started that God, please give us the words to say, and maybe one of those words was something you need to hear. So, guys, thank you. Uh, we'll see you next week, and let's go over, over next door and worship. All right? Thank you.